My name is Ben Williamson, and I'm the ED here at NRCC, the Northern Rockies Conservation Cooperative. Um, today, we're gathered virtually um, with the hope that next time around in 2023 that we can do this in person. Um, it would be lovely to be with everyone, say, at the Center for the Arts, but uh, this will have to do for now. Um, after today's event, I encourage everyone to head over to nrccooperative.org to check out the symposium. It's just went live today. Um, in it, you'll find a series of keynote speakers. Um, and I will switch to that slide. So you'll find a keynote speaker series, including Doug Smith, Rebecca Waters, Jason Valdez, Gary Tabor, Franz Kamenzahn, and Katie Shepard Christensen. Um, you will also find written research abstracts and conservation project abstracts. Um, and as well as the winners of our first human wildlife coexistence photography contest and a collection of our conservation awards and tributes, which we'll be going over today. Um, just letting in a few more people. And I guess I would like to start today by thanking just a few select people. Um, but first off, I'd like to thank all the keynote speakers who participated. Um, I'd like to thank the abstract review committee for looking over the research updates the researchers and leaders who provided abstracts themselves, all who contributed content for our awards and tribute pages, and then today's breakout session leaders. I'd also like to give, out a, give a shout out to Marissa Wesker for all the help she did with the photo contest and videos. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Mark Allenberger who helped out with website development. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank the Megan Burt's Rain Wildlife Fund for sponsoring the Rain Citizen Conservation Award. And then lastly, I'd like to thank all of you. Um, all, many of you um, are friends of NRCC and I, I personally know many of you here. And so it's just really nice to see a lot of you. And for those I don't, I look forward to uh, meeting you in the future. Um, but before I wanted to, before we started today, I wanted to just do a quick, um, there's still people getting in here. So I'll just keep admitting. So before we start, I wanted to provide some quick background on NRCC. Uh, we were founded here in Jackson in 1987 from a vision that sought to integrate ecological and social expertise. Um, since then, we've, we've really grown in, into a network of scientists, leaders, educators, um, managers, many in the GYE and across the globe, really, um, all with the goal of conducting research, leading workshops, and mentoring others. Why I'm personally drawn to NRCC is that it's unique in seeing environmental problems as directly shaped by social and cultural grounding um, that influences more than what we typically think of as environmental problems. Um, and so this symposium was, was formed with that in mind. Um, it's, it started in 2003, and since it's been a, a forum for high-level dialogue, bringing together leaders across the region to share information about the present state and future of wildlife and human coexistence in the region. Um, Interaction amongst people like we're doing today is an important step in building a community of informed citizens and in the, the greater problem solving process. So, so thank you all for joining. I'm, I'm really happy that we can do this. I have a few more to let in. Um, and then on that note, I would like to make a few quick announcements that are coming out of NRCC. There are two books that have recently been published by NRCC people. Um, the first is from our founder and an emeritus board member, Susan Clark. The title is Yellowstone Survival, A Call to Action for a New Conservation Story. Um, this book was written over the last decade and really provides a, a lens to examine the contemporary challenges we're facing here in the GYE. Um, and talks a lot about policy and management challenges. Um, and so I really encourage anyone who's a manager in the region or an, a leader or even just anyone in the general public to pick this one up. Um, and then the second is from our artist in residence, Katie Shepard Christensen. Let me just get to that slide. And that title is the Artist's Field Guide to Yellowstone. We had a, an event about a month ago to unleash, release this book. Um, and it brings together a whole handful of artists and writers across the region to try to discuss the, the different types of way that we make meaning out of the species and the landscapes here in Yellowstone. Um, and with that, 
I'd like to hand it over to Peyton Curley Griffin, who is NRCC's board president, who will, will begin the presentation of our conservation awards. Great, thanks, Ben. And I'd like to second his thanks to all the people and organizations who have contributed their voices and work to make this event possible. It's been a new sort of challenge as a virtual event, and we're so grateful that we were able to carry on this biennial tradition. Uh, for our first award, if you could cue that up, Ben, for me. I have the pleasure of announcing the winner of the Jackson Hole Wildlife Symposium Photography Contest. RJ Turner, NRCC's photographer in residence, who is living in Kenya right now, and Jackson Hole's world traveling photographer, Tim Muller, selected the top five photos from our contest submissions. The winning image is Stay in Your Lane by Kate Oxman. RJ and Tim said they selected this image because it is, it is visually compelling beautifully shot, well-processed, and it merges the theme of human wildlife coexistence within the larger landscape. They noted also that scenes like this are not very common anymore with increased human presence in the GYE. There were four other images that were also selected as finalists. Don't Fence Me In by Scott Crisp, Curious Neighbor by Jackson Doyle, Actually, this is, uh, <laughs> is. okay, thanks. Uh, Authorized Personnel by Kate Oxman and Hello in There by Naomi Heindel. And my apologies if I butchered anyone's name. <laughs> um, a big thank you to Marissa Wesker, our Teton Science School's AmeriCorps intern this spring who conceived of this new photo contest and made it happen. It's really great that, and we're gonna continue this tradition. Thank you, Marissa. Now it gives me great pleasure to announce this year's recipient of the RAIN Citizen Conservation Award. This award was created in 2014 to honor two of Jackson's finest citizen conservationists, Megan Burt Rains, well known to all of us. As part of the symposium, we will also have a tribute to Burt on our website, who we lost this winter. The RAIN Citizen Conservation Award is given to someone who carries on the legacy of Megan Burt by encouraging and carrying out citizen science and conservation and making a positive difference through actions that they take in their daily lives. And past recipients of the award, some of whom are here with us today, are Carol Schneebeck, Chuck Schneebeck, Francis Clark, Bernard McHugh, and Susan Marsh. This year's recipient again demonstrates what a difference one person can make for wildlife and human community building. Tim Griffith is this year's recipient. If something is happening in the Valley for bird conservation, you know Tim is somewhere in the thick of it. Tim has counted sage grouse and monitored weather stations for Grand Teton National Park. He has monitored gray gray owl nests and sounds for the Teton Raptor Center. He checks bluebird nests and has participated in Christmas bird counts for 54 years, spring bird days for 35 years. He is one of the top three e-bird recorders in Jackson Hole. He's been an invaluable volunteer for Jackson Hole Wildlife Foundation's nature mapping program, and he's helping Bridger Teton and Targhee National Forest compile data for fuels reduction. Past Rains Award recipient, recipients Francis Clark and Bernard McHugh told us, conservation is at the heart of all Tim does. He carries the spirit of Bert into the future. So thank you, Tim, for all you do. And you can visit our website to see, hear more about Tim and read quotes from community members. So our, my next honor is to announce the Craighead Conservation Award, which was established in 2003 to honor the legacy of Frank and John Craighead for their extraordinary dedication to wildlife conservation in Jackson Hole and Greater Yellowstone. Recipients of this award have significantly impacted wildlife conservation in the GYE region and demonstrated the dedicated spirit of the Craighead brothers through years of service in wildlife research, management, community involvement, and or policy. Previous recipients, some of whom are also here with us today, include Steve Kilpatrick, Michael Whitfield, Bruce Smith, Franz Cominson, Deborah Patla, Susan Patla, Mark L. Brock and PJ White. And this year's conservation, excuse me, this year's Craighead Award recipient is almost synonymous with wolf conservation and restoration in 
Yellowstone, Doug Smith. Right out of high school, Doug worked with Eric Klinghammer at Wolf Park, Indiana, and then on a summer wolf moose project on Isle Royale with Rolf Peterson, and in northern Minnesota with Dave Meach. So Doug earned an MS focused on beaver physiology at Michigan Tech, followed by a PhD on beaver ecology at University of Nevada, Reno. Ultimately, there was no keeping him away from wolves. He started as a biologist for the Wolf Restoration Prog Program in Yellowstone in 1994 under Mike Phillips and later took over the program as program leader. From his early days in Yellowstone, Doug was committed to learning as much as possible about wolves and the greater Yellowstone ecosystem as a whole. He has authored or co-authored 25 annual reports, 85 scientific publications, three books, 22 book chapters, 37 popular articles, and 27 technical reports. Last year, Doug, Daniel Stoller, and Daniel McMelty produced Yellowstone Wolves, Science and Discovery in the World's First National Park with contributions from 74 authors. And perhaps even more impressive is Doug's commitment to taking the time to give talks to small group of citizens, to engage numerous volunteers, and to mentor students. I dare say most of you have seen him on PBS or giving a TED talk. He goes out of his way to share his passion for wolves and nature and works hard to create the respectful dialogue that is so needed, especially when the goal is conservation of a feared and loathed predator. Smith exemplifies the Craighead tradition with his efforts to educate through film, books, and talks, as well as through scientific research. Renowned wolf biologist Rolf Peterson told us, what we've learned about wolves in the Yellowstone ecosystem since 1995 is phenomenal, and it might not have happened had it not been for Doug's dogged determination and ability to enlist collaborators from around the world. Thank you, Doug. And uh, since Doug is here today, feel free to shout out your congratulations via chat. And you can visit our website to hear more about Doug and read quotes from colleagues around the world. So now I'd like to hand it back to Ben for our Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you, Peyton. So NRCC is, is honored to have the chance to offer uh, Jocelyn Matkins for a Lifetime Achievement Award for her many years of steadfast and skillful dedication to the conservation of landscapes, habitat, and species. Um, Jocelyn passed away this past January at age 42. So a little bit about Jocelyn. Um, her career in land trust began early on as an intern for the Wood River Land Trust in Haley, Idaho. And her own education is rooted in the sciences. At Oregon State, she studied the nutrient cycles of forests and riparian zones, earning a master's of science. And from there, she went down to Northern California to the Placer Land Trust, where she um, was the stewardship director there. After that, she returned to her home of Southeast Idaho to take on the executive director role at the Sagebrush Step Land Trust. And after five years there, she moved on to the Teton Regional Land Trust in Driggs, where since 2015, she served as the executive director. During those years, Jocelyn became a national leader in the land trust movement, having served as the initial board chair of the Idaho Coalition of Land Trusts, a board chair for the Heart of the Rockies Initiative, as well as the Land Trust Alliance National Land, Tr land Trust Leadership Council. In 2020, the Community Foundation of Teton Valley awarded Jocelyn the Don Banks Nonprofit Leadership Award for her commitment to building the capacity of organizations and her deep commitment to serving the lands and people of Teton Valley. The drive to protect landscapes for Jocelyn was undergirded by a deep belief that the human connection to land is both good for the future of natural spaces and for the healing of human lives. She understood ecology as an intertwined way of seeing the world. As her close friend, Michael Whitfield, founding executive director of the Teton Regional Land Trust, former executive director of the Heart of the Rockies Initiative and Jocelyn's colleague and friend writes, her love of nature and community was in her bones. The authenticity of her commitment evident in all her actions. With hopefulness, Jocelyn intentionally, intentionally built landscape resilience one project at a time. So Jocelyn will re be remembered by many and we are humbly honored here at NRCC to offer her friends and family this Lifetime Achievement Award. 
Finally, we are honoring the life and legacy of, of Bert Rains in this year's symposium. Um, Bert passed away on January 1st, 2021. And at 96, Bert spent many years as a naturalist, writer, leader, and resident of Jackson Hole. Um, I, I will refrain from recounting the majority of Bert's career as it was long, um, but it was rich with storytelling, writing deep inquiry, and filled by a passion and curiosity for birds, animals, and the Teton region, and his many friends here. So instead, I will encourage you all to visit the website. Um, there are really beautiful written tributes to Bert from many of his friends and, and allies. So with that, I think I will wrap up. Um, thanks again for attending. I'd like to encourage everyone to go onto the NRCC website. The symposium is there live and in its entirety. Um, when you get to the homepage, there's a bright yellow button. You can't miss it. Um, and that will bring you to the homepage. There's programs and award section. Um, so I encourage you to go watch the keynote videos, read the research and project updates, and learn more about our awardees um, who I'd like to say congrats to again. Um, and I also want to say, once you're going through those videos or reading those abstracts, if there's any questions or comments you have for me or the, for, for the person presenting, um, please reach out to me or uh, put their feedback into a comment form that's in that website. So um, hopefully we can make it interactive, although as a website, it can only be so much. Um, with that, I, you know, it's really nice to see so many familiar faces. And I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for, for coming today. Um, I'm enjoying, it's been great to, to be able to see everybody here. Um, and so with that, I wish everyone a safe and warm and enjoyable and relaxing summer. So thanks everybody.